is the challenge of the decarbonization of the steel industry. And I think that is really yeah. the more interesting conversation across players across the world. Where is Tata Steel in that process? Where is the Indian steel industry in that process? Can you give me a sense? Sure. Yeah. No, I think it's an extremely important journey for the steel industry going ahead and also for Tata Steel. Uh, we've already announced plans in Europe because uh, Europe as a geography is ahead of the rest of the world in planning for it, planning the infrastructure, planning the policies, etc. Uh, so each country has set its own goals and uh, we've uh, said that we'll move into uh, from coal-based to gas-based to hydrogen-based steel making in Netherlands, for instance. In UK, the opportunity is about leveraging the scrap that is available in the UK to make steel uh, which, is, which has a lower carbon footprint. Uh, in India, it's going to be even more complex because firstly, in India, if you have to move from coal to gas to hydrogen, you need to have gas available in eastern India, right? Uh, today, there's no gas available in eastern India. And I think uh, we need to work with the government to see how soon can gas be available in eastern India. Otherwise, steel companies and most of the capacity is being added in the east because iron ore is there, right. uh, will keep investing in blast furnaces. And if you invest in a blast furnace, it's going, you're going to run it for 20 years or 40 years, right? So I think that's a call we need to take. Uh, it's a very important journey, but the cost and complexity should not be underestimated. I think Europe is realizing that, right? Even I was, this yeah, I was just going to bring up that in absolutely. Europe, we're already seeing this play out. Right? Absolutely, because Europe had assumed that uh, they will transition easily from coal to gas, but now with the problems with Russia, uh, many countries in Europe were dependent on Russia for gas. Yes. So they don't have the LNG network to import gas from uh, other parts of the world. Norway, which is a gas producer, is trying to maximize the gas production but cannot substitute for Russia. So I think these are, uh, you know, uh, big plays because over the last 100 years, we built the infrastructure for fossil fuels, mm -hmm. right? Coal can move easily. If you don't get coal in Russia, you'll buy from Australia or from North America mm -hmm. or wherever. But the gas infrastructure, LNG network, gas pipelines, and we are not even started talking about hydrogen. Yeah. So all this needs to be built for the world and for the steel industry to transition to green. So I think it's a great uh, challenge, great opportunity. Uh, also, a lot of innovation will need to come in because it's not a silver bullet which will solve the problem. There'll be a bouquet of solutions which will have to be used. Yeah, European business has already uh, started working on plans to yeah. uh, become, uh, let's say, next, next generation ready in that sense. Absolutely. So in Europe, uh, we had already announced that we'll be net zero by 2050. But now as a group, uh, we've taken a call, Tata Steel, that we're going to chase net zero by 2045. Okay. So that's something that we have. And does that require large capital investment? So n more than capital investment, yes, it, uh, it will require for a lot more uh, use of scaling up of technologies that are available today. So we're already doing a lot of work, uh, both in Europe and in India. For instance, we've set up in India, India's first carbon capture uh, and usage plant in a steel company in Jamshedpur. We're setting up a biomass-based hydrogen production unit in Kalinganagar pilot plants. But all that needs to get scaled up uh, uh, in a very big way. In Europe, we had already done work on Hisarna, which uh, emits the kind of carbon which is easier to capture and store. Okay. Uh, we made the plans to transition from Blasphemous route to a gas-based DRI route to a hydrogen route. But we are talking to the Dutch government to see when can gas and hydrogen be available and at what price. So once we have clarity on that, we can move ahead with our plans. Okay. Yeah. Is there any immediate impact on your operations as a result of the energy crisis that some parts of Europe are facing, either directly or indirectly through your customers? Uh, well, uh, directly, uh, we were quite well hedged on gas prices uh, when gas prices shot up. And I think gas prices are settling down now. Okay. So to that extent, I think the worst is behind us. Uh, our customers, uh, particularly auto customers, have been impacted by the because I'm hearing uh, of neon, shutdowns. Gas, yeah. Yeah, neon gas issues from Ukraine. Uh, so the auto pickup has been a bit slower than uh, what we had anticipated, uh, but other sectors have been reasonably uh, strong. Uh, so, so I think so far, uh, you know, what has been impacted on the demand side has been offset by supply constraints because Ukraine and Russia are out of the EU okay. market, okay. Uh, and now if India is also out of the EU market, uh, so that creates a situation where the spreads in uh, Europe can continue to be reasonably healthy for us. So you feel confident about yeah. growth in Europe, lower than growth in India, but yeah. still If steady. not growth, at least uh, not the steady kind of, steady. yeah, yeah, yeah. Europe if is a mature growth, market. you're saying? So no, because not even the 2 or 3% growth that you were I mean, uh, planning? I mean, just now we stand by that, but I think there are forecasts that if the war continues for very long, Europe may go into a recession. I'm okay. more commenting on that. Just sure. now it's fine. Yeah. All right.